Scott Schiller coming to you from Haynes Garage in Charleston, South Hot, Carolina. It's got to be pushing 100 degrees here today and it is sweltering. That, that's summertime in Charleston. Uh, Lou Ladwig uh, got on the horn in Facebook the other night and he asked me about uh, how to handle a, an old axe and how I do these axes for these Jeeps. And I'm willing to share that with you guys. A couple of you guys have asked me. It's a, it's a lot of work. It's tedious. It's time consuming. I love it. I just it's a, it's a little passion I got. I love it like I love these Jeeps. So I made a short video of just how to do the handle, how to install the handle. And I hope it helps and I hope uh, it answers your first question there, Lou. So what I've got here is an old fireman's axe from a Charleston Fire Department. And the handle is split. And this particular fireman wants to restore this so he can hang it at the uh, local firehouse. But we'll start with this. Here's the top of the handle. And you'll see there's a wedge in there and there's a metal wedge in there. And to get those out, what I do is I take a drill and drill those pieces out first. I won't show you the long boring process, but I'll put a drill in there just so you can see kind of how it, how it goes about. When you're doing this, you want to be careful not to actually gouge your drill bit into the actual axe head itself. You'll see here a metal wedge that somebody has put in here, and it's actually been put in there incorrectly, but just pull it out, and there it is. Okay, so now you've got this all drilled out nice, and it only took about 10 minutes. Didn't damage anything in the head, and then what I do is I take just a soft-faced hammer. You don't want to be smacking that head with metal. You'll put dimples in it, and just start on the outside. Give it a couple wraps. See it starting to come off. And as it gets closer to coming off the head, we just get down here to the ground so it don't fall. There you go. There's the head. There's the old handle where we drill it out. So now that the head is off the old handle, you can see the eye here. You examine it, and right here there's a crack. That's probably not going to cause you know any seriousness. This gentleman is not going to use this for anything more than a wall hanger, but we're going to make it pretty. But one of the things on these heads that you want to look at is guys like to take these things and, and beat stakes and stuff into the ground like a sledgehammer, and it causes what they call mushrooming on the back side of the pole of the head. And this one's rusted up pretty good and pitted, but I don't see any maker's marks yet. Show you how to clean this up, maybe some will turn up. Now's gonna be the part that y'all might laugh. This is where I actually dress the heads. It's outside my front porch, in the column. <laughs> and you can see by the column right here, all this dirt and dust down here, but it just, it's very comfortable to me and I got a plug right close. What I use is a Makita five inch disc grinder. Or you get sand paper. And I'm gonna remove the polling and some of this rust from here, see if we can't find some marks. So now I've got this ax head initially cleaned up. Put a edge on it. It's just a rough edge, but it's still sharp. Took all the rust off of it and took the pulling out. And what you want to do is when you're using that grinder, soft touch. Let the tool do the work. Don't force it. Try not to put any grooves or grinds in it. And we got that mess off the back. Next step is to soak it in the works. Get the rest of the rust off the head. The works toilet bowl cleaner. You can find this at Walmart, the dollar store. It's a dollar for the quart and a half. Now they're giving you 33% more free. After I clean that up initially, I want to get all the rust off it that I can possibly get. So I'm going to soak this in here for a while. And I don't know what the trick for this works is, but it, it works. Soak it in here for about five to 10 minutes and we'll rinse it off and never, all the rust will be off it. So with the works bath, it came out, got it out of the eye, You'll see a little bit of residue in there. I use soap and water to neutralize the works. And watch your face, watch your hands, that stuff will burn you. So we've got the head here, and there's the wooden wedge that came with this reproduction handle. This one's from Lowe's. It's just a 36 inch 
It's got a curve to it with this square back notch on the back. No fawn's foot. But it comes with the wooden poplar wedge. And I had to buy the two metal edges, uh, wedges separately. So the handle will fit, but doesn't go all the way in. So what do we do with this? So now you've slid your handle onto the ax head. And you see that it's already bottomed out down here. But the top of the head, it is not. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. Little tip and trick. All the hardware stores and the big box stores, when you buy these handles, all have a big staple they put in the end to hang it on their little hanger that they display this stuff on. Remove that before you do anything else. If you hit that into that bottom of that handle, it will split it. Just a word to the wise. I've got these two 4x4 four four pieces. They're just pressure treated 4x4 four four with scrap from a job I did. But you can see how hammered they're getting. And those little marks on there have been made from axe heads. So you separate those apart about like that. You want to make it so the eye is in between those two. And you've got room for that handle to come through. Basically, you're going to turn that axe head up on there like that. Sorry, it's hard to do this and film at the same time. You turn that axe head up on there like that, upside down. And at the top, you've got this square notch. This is no fawn's foot. I hope you can see that. It's a square notch. You're going to take that dead blow hammer and you're going to give that a good wrapping, maybe three or four times, and see how far that handle goes down into that eye of that head. You really don't want to be using a sledgehammer or a metal hammer to hit the end of that handle on that square spot because you are going to split it and damage it. This is a two and a half pound dead blow soft face hammer from Harbor Freight. It's probably eight to ten years old and I beat everything in the brother with it and held up real well. It works real well too. So now we've hit that a few times and you can see how that's actually stopped because I can't smack it any further without actually doing damage to the handle. But you see how it's starting to seat in here. Now's where the fun's going to begin. Okay, so we're back outside at the sand and grinding station, <laughs> my makeshift one. You can make your own. This just happened to work really well for me, as you can see all the stuff I've ground again. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take that 5-inch disc grinder with the 80-grit sandpaper on it, and I'm going to start to taper out right here so this head can sleep. Now you're not going to take a lot off. It's, the trick is a little at a time, but basically you just do like this. going to shape that that's going to go in the eye. Now we're going to go back inside with the 4x4s four and give this about another five to seven wraps and see if we can get to go in a little further. Now I've done this a couple times now with the grinding a little bit and then ha hammering it down. 